Yeah, but after a pretty hard fought first quarter, it was pretty much perfect football after that for you guys. You must have been wrapped with that last three quarters. Yeah, it was a bit unstable in that first quarter. Um, I don't think uh, either coach's box thought that uh, we had it on our terms. So uh, and that was the message at quarter time. You know, we're just up, but um, we need to fix a couple of things. And uh, and yeah, there were a couple of pleasing things. We we needed to sort of get uh, a few things back on track a little bit after what happened last week. And uh, and so the way the game panned out after that was uh, yeah, as you said, it was. It was important for us and pleasing for us. I've seen the context of the season really important percentage boost as well. Obviously, you know, he's got to do everything he can to really consolidate the spot. Yeah, well, it's still up in the air, isn't yeah. it? You know, so uh, you never go into a game even um, really thinking or talking. Definitely not talking about percentage, but um, but ultimately, yeah, there's there's still things that are way out of our control and. Uh, and we're going to wait to see what happens, obviously, today. And um, But really, even the, the discussion in there was uh, the challenge, you know, down the highway. You know, we always look forward to going to Ballarat and to play the Giants this week after, you know, we watched them yesterday and they were really strong again against Fremantle. So it's a really good challenge for us in the last home and away game. I know uh, North lost Combin, obviously, and... Um bit undermanned in defence, but Sam Darcy must have been stuck to it how he played today. Yeah, well, when you're um, playing against a, a forward line that's got you know, some key threats in in Sam and, and Jamar and, and Aaron, um, not ideal for the Kangas to lose uh, Combin uh, like they did. So that if we got the supply right and gave him a bit of a look, it was always going to be a challenge for them to... Uh, to defend him, but yeah, ultimately, you know, as far as the um, the game between the ears, to see the way he was able to, um, you know, take a bit deep breath and convert, and uh, not even really worry too much about last week, that was a, a good step for Sam. What's your theory behind playing Love as the number one ruckman today? Uh, you probably just asked me the precursor question to that question. I think you know, it was basically to Sam as much as he missed. A few last week, he was a big threat against Adelaide, and so you take him out of there. Um, we've obviously got some boys who who can mark the footy, and uh, but he's emerging, he's he's developing, and um, so it's a combination of keeping Sam forward, and uh, and Rory's been um, he hasn't played a lot of I don't know, he's played a few games more for Fremantle as the first ruck. Uh, when Sean Darcy went out of the team, and it's one of the reasons um, he was such an attractive proposition when there was a chance we could bring him in, because um, I watched him in in a handful of games be pretty dominant at the stoppage as a, as a ruckman when he was called upon. I know there was a couple of games when Sean went down in games early, and Rory had to do that over playing for uh, the Purple, and uh, and so. You know, as I've said in the past, he's such a great character that you, he knows. Like you go to him and say, "Hey, um, we might need you to play in the ruck this week." He's like, "Yep, no worries." He starts in his own mind getting adventurous with what he's what he can do in that position, and you remind him, "Hey, you're playing against Sherry, who's probably the number one stoppage ruckman in the competition at the moment." So uh, we just need stability, and they gave us that, and uh, we thought he played a really strong game, and and it allows Sam to stay forward and. And obviously, be the threat that he was. Aaron, Aaron came off very late. Is that anything serious, or what's the? He just had a bit of cramp in his hamstring. Yeah. yeah. How likely are you to get him pushed back next week? Uh, well, I think he's less likely than than likely. Yeah, at, at the moment. So I think he's definitely going to have another one. That's that's my understanding at this point in time. Just getting back to the forward line. There we You'll remember as well as anyone early in the season, the narrative was Norton's got to go back. It's not going to work with all the bigs up, up front. Is a day like today, is that the, you know, I know there's been more examples than just today, but was that the justification? Is that is that what this forward line is capable of? Oh, look, I think, Mark, you know, as you know, I've never felt any need to justify or ratify any decisions around positional moves. I mean, um, so I don't think, I don't necessarily think it's justification. That early that 
a combination of um, the five bigs. So if you had Tim English, Rory Lobb, Aaron Norton, Jamari Hagen, and Sam, we knew that that was probably ruck front end was too many. If you if you want to be um, have your team in lights as far as your defensive phase goes, it's yep. difficult for those guys to uh, defend the ground like the medium smalls and the runners can at, to- at times. So we knew that wasn't probably going to work, um, and and we haven't really gone there. But um, but as far as Aaron, uh, it, it is so difficult historically when you're trying to find key forwards to give you that presence and um, be an imposing force in the game. You know, there's some teams in the competition that are still searching for it, um, and Aaron's one of those players. So, so it is easier to play key defence than key forward. Um, and and I think with Aaron too, as time has gone by, he he's so accustomed to playing as a key forward, it, it probably take him a little while to acclimatise. But if you ask him, um, he'll tell you that he wants to play forward, which is good. Yeah, that's it's what you want. But he'll, he'll always go back there if we need him. So I think, you know, as time goes by, he's still a very young man, Aaron, as much as I think this is his sixth year. Um, those young key forwards, hopefully, if they look after themselves and, you know, are, are real pros with the game, they, they should continue to uh, be forces in the game. Uh, you just need the rest of the crew to, to get them the ball. Uh, but they're still learning, you know, the patterns they run, how they work together. They're working with Matty Spanger and, you know, they'll, they'll get it right sometimes, but they're, they're still learning how to play together. Just what about Rory? Can I just, on Rory, where does he fit beyond this season? Like, everyone's fit. Is he a defender now? Like, what, if he's playing in the best side, what does he have to be? Because we just touched on sort of the dynamics of how all the tools fit in. Yeah, at the start of every year, we put a, uh, a little chart up for the players where their priority positions are, and then, you know, if push comes to shove, if we need to use them somewhere else where that'll be and we talk about that, we practice it. Um, if you're asking me right at this point in time what his priorities would be, I'd say back first um, and then it'll just depend on injury, whether you, you need him like we did today to play somewhere else. But I think what he's done in recent times, um, I think back first, but then, yeah, look, if, if we front up to a week where... Um, you know, a, a ruck and a key forward are out, then we probably need to play key forward, depending on who's playing well, you know, for Footscray at state league level. Just doing that part of the ground, um, obviously you've, in the in the end you finished uh, ahead of the ledger with the goal kicking today, but it was still a little bit dicey with, um, in the first half, yeah, and it's been a little bit of an issue over the last couple of years. Is that something you're still a little bit of a concern heading into what might be a, another final series? Uh, not, not really. I mean, I, you know, as I've been saying, until we get there, I don't really want to talk about the yeah. final series. You know, it's that earn your right type mentality. Um, but what, yeah, and if I if I talk a little bit about history, I'll, um, I'll let you go and do your own research on that, Ronnie. There's been times when we haven't been flash at that, but then it's, it's just all the planets have aligned and you and you start to convert. Um, so I'm ne- I'm never really caught strung up on it um, because I think if you are it exacerbates the issue. Um, and I think that's a, that was a message out of last week's game publicly and then privately to Sam and say, hey, you're a good kick, you know, get back to some method and um, I'm more going to praise you for what you did as a key forward in the air and, and, your, and your defensive efforts, you know, the other stuff will you know, it'll come this week. And I think that's the best way to approach that. And they, get it, they had enough time, you know, on a seven-dayer, We'll have enough time to practice it again, and so uh, uh, I, I don't see it as a as a, an issue um, uh, right at this point in time. Do, do you treat this week as almost a final, given what's at stake? Is it almost like finals come early? This this game against GWS and the rivalry that you guys have developed over the last decade as well. Uh, well, one of the uh, things you can do in these situations is is go to that outcome-based approach to the game. And I think if, we, if you go down that track, um, straight away you've moved away from the fundamentals or you know, the core of what you really should be focusing on. And, and so I think that's what we did pretty well this week. You know, the essentials that, that matter um, individually in the lines, how it feeds the team. And, and then that started to sort of um, blossom as the game went on. So we'll, 
We'll approach it in the same way. And uh, as I said, there are, there are a lot of things out of our control and um, all we can do is influence from within. And uh, we'll do our best to get our players in the right headspace to, uh, to play their best footy uh, against the Giants in Ballarat. Is, is there a part of, uh, I'm sure the coaches have different views on this, but is there a part of what happened the way last year ended? Is there almost a sense that you want to atone for you know, the way that, that last three games ended last year almost in a way? You know what I mean? Uh, I won't say that I've forgotten about it, yeah. but it's a, it's a little bit different this year where it, it is in our control, mm. um, as as the previous year wasn't. Mm. Um, you know, we, in, in the end, we're going in with a bit of hope. Uh, was we're going to the last round, knowing that if we win, we'll we'll play finals. Um, so it's good to be in that position, and uh, and as you know, after probably a. Uh, a bit of a challenging start to the year. We, some of our footy this year is, um, it's challenged a um, you know, number of teams in the competition. And so we feel good about our, our, our prospects, you know, week to week. And, uh, and I don't really want to speculate on, on whether or not if we get there, but um, you can only imagine how we'll probably approach it and how we'll feel about our, our prospects if we get there. Thanks guys. Uh,